All right, we're going to go over some uh, troubleshooting techniques with resistance, current, and voltage. I have a bigger circuit here, and before anybody starts commenting, I know it's kind of an unrealistic circuit. We're just using resistors. We have nine resistors. We have nine switches in the green blocks here, nine of these. And then we have several test points, or if you want to think of them as terminal block points, um, labeled alphabetically. The whole idea is to go over some tricks and techniques. I know there's a lot of ways you can troubleshoot. I know that a lot of people might not like my methods, and that's cool. Share with me how you do it, and uh, we'll talk about it. So I'm going to apply power to this circuit and identify where the positive is in red. The negative is in black, and the orange is no power. It's not negative or positive, right? It's neither one. Notice that if I were to take a voltage reading where I have red and black, I would see full voltage. I've closed switch one, and everything is normal. And you could see the positive would make it up to terminal block or test point, bravo, B. So if I took a reading from A to B, it would be zero because it's the same color, but bravo to echo, I would get full voltage. I'm continuing the flow of positive by closing switch two, and now I'll close switch three. Now notice the difference here. Here I do not have current flow. Switch three is open, so I get the full voltage drop across switch three. When I close switch three, I spread out the voltage drops. The sum of the voltage drops needs to equal the supply voltage for this rung. This is rung one, rung two, and rung three. Let's zoom in on rung one. So if I took a voltmeter and placed it across rung, uh, or the main buses there, of course I should see full voltage. First step in troubleshooting always. Now here I'm going to see zero volts because reading from positive bus to A with this switch closed is no different than taking this meter lead to the same bus point. It's like reading across the positive bus. But when I move that meter lead over, I should see a voltage drop across R1. That's what this stands for, ER1, voltage drop across the first load. If I were to be here and see zero volts, and here and see zero volts, I know immediately there's something up with this circuit, or there's something wrong with this load. Uh, could be a number of things, could have a switch open, uh, any anything, but I know this is not normal. I And I won't know specifically what it is until I take some other readings. A to B is the same as reading positive bus to B. I'm still going to see the voltage drop across the first load. Now I move my meter lead over to show that I'm still only reading the first load's voltage drop. And that's because this is just a piece of wire as it's closed. I think of it as a piece of wire. Now I've opened switch two. Notice now I can see the full supply voltage. Here I'm only seeing one load voltage drop. Here, full voltage. Full voltage is kind of your dead giveaway in a series circuit. If you see full voltage, supply voltage anywhere across two points in a series circuit, that is where current flow has been stopped. That's a good way to think about it. Now I've moved my meter lead over, I've closed switch to, still only seeing the voltage drop across the first load. And now when I move the lead from C to D, I'm seeing the voltage drop across two loads. Now I don't have to do any math on this, I just need to realize the circuit rules, and we're talking about the sum of the voltage drops in a series circuit rule. When I move that meter lead over, I better see an increase in voltage drops. 
if I see no change between here and here, then I know probably there's something up with this load. Notice here I'm still seeing the same reading between here and here. And now I'm seeing the full voltage, the supply voltage, because this is just like reading across the main bus at point A with this switch closed. All right, so we've got a big circuit with a lot of uh, markings. Let's clean this up a little bit. Everybody understands that our switches are labeled 1 through 9. We're going to get rid of that labeling, clean it up a little bit. And we're going to place an amp meter in our circuit. Now remember, current has to flow through the amp meter if you're using the proper DC meter. And this is a DC supply, so we are measuring amperage of the full circuit. With all switches closed, everything's working fine. This meter placed here is going to read what all the loads are drawing. And if I move that amp meter over, I'm going to get the same reading. So between here and here, I'm still reading full circuit current. Now if I place the amp meter here, I'm just reading the current in the first rung. Remember rungs 1, 2, and 3. If I start moving that amp meter around, I'm going to see the same reading all the way down because current's the same in a series circuit. If I place an amp meter here, this rung is now out of the picture. I'm reading the amperage of the last two rungs. And if I move this amp meter over, I would see that same reading. <clears throat> if I move the amp meter down, I'm only reading the amperage drawn by rung 3. If I move it over, I'm going to see the same reading. And if I place it in the circuit, in rung 3, that's no different than having it here. I'm going to see the same reading. And if I move it down, I'll see the same reading. Current's the same in a series circuit. Now let's put our amp meter back in place to read full circuit current. And we're going to make this resistance short out. Shorting out is the same as if we just put a piece of wire there. Let's say that the uh, increase in amperage doesn't hurt any loads and doesn't trip our power supply or a fuse or anything. But here at our amp meter, we would see an increase in current. When resistance goes down, current goes up. While we've, in, we've uh, decreased resistance with this short, so that would make the, the current go up. And if I were to measure right here, if I knew what that was supposed to be, I would definitely see an increase in current. Now what I'd like to do is in a proper circuit that's designed correctly, we would have fuses or breakers present. So we're going to blow the fuse in this circuit right here. So if that fuse blows and everything's closed, all switches are closed, notice how far negative would make it. I bring this up to bring up the point that if you remember before, negative would make it here whether, you know, whether or not we had a short. Because a short is basically zero ohms or a piece of wire. So first step, I take a reading. Okay, I have voltage. And I move, start moving my meter lead downstream. And my meter is still going to read full voltage. What I would do if I was in this situation and I verified that I didn't have any power on the circuit, no current flow with this kind of check, I'd open this switch just to be sure. Even though I know that I've blown a fuse here, I just proved it, I would open that switch and verify that I have no potential difference between two points. Then I would take some resistance readings at this point. So we're reading between F and negative bus, and we should see the resistance of three loads. If I don't, if I see less than what I'm expecting, then I know somewhere in this circuit I'm bypassing resistance.
So I'm going to move my meter lead around to verify that this load has some resistance to it. Notice here I'd be expecting to see some resistance, some load. I don't know what it is. And I know that when I move this over, that should drop, that should decrease. If I go from here to here and I don't see any change in my resistance, then I know that the load issue is here. But I'm, I'm moving my meter lead downstream anyway to see what some of my readings would be. And here, I'm showing the example because we know this is the shorted load, that when I move my meter lead between these two points, my resistance doesn't change. Well, that's, there's your dead giveaway. There's something up here. And I don't know what the resistance should be, but I know that R6 should be something. And taking a resistance reading at these two points would, would verify that. So if I did that and I had my suspicion, I would just take these readings. If everything's easily accessible, the circuit's open, and I have the, the few minutes to do some double checks, I would go ahead and take these readings and kind of compare. We all know that at these two points, reading zero ohms pretty much confirms for me that I have a shorted load right here. Here's the part that a lot of people don't like to take the time to do. If I were troubleshooting this circuit and I knew that R5 was the issue, here's my advice through experience. First off, when you get the replacement device, even if it has a QC sticker on it, take it in the shop and do a bench test on it. Apply the same voltage you should have to it. Verify that it works as designed and if you have the ability to take a resistance reading on it do that too and maybe document that on the print somewhere then when you replace this item after you've bench tested it put your amp meter in the circuit allow the, the current to flow through your amp meter to complete the circuit set this up on your highest amp rating and close the switch and if you have to tick down to get a good reading to see the amperage you know to get more resolution on your meter do that until you see the amperage that this whole circuit's drawing what you're doing is you're verifying that the amperage that this is drawing is not above the fuse you're about to put in of course, there's a lot of safety that you'd have to consider if this is a real world situation. What am I activating? Is it moving equipment? Are there people around? But if you can do this simple test, this verifies for you, You're, you've done the right thing. You've actually repaired the circuit. Then after you replace the fuse, take some voltage readings and verify you see some voltage drops across, across each load. So that's my two cents and my advice on how to do some troubleshooting and repair.